Hi everybody, it's me Legarlex and I'm back again doing this is a part 2 review of the BlueStack software. The software is an operating system basically in a way but more of like an app runner. What it is is you're able to compatibly run your APK files which is an Android application file compiled. What it is is that you're able to play Android apps, games, all of these applications through a Windows platform with it ease, no problem at all. It's, it's still a beta, the link is below, I want you guys to check it out. Since the Ouya player has been out for more than a year already and it runs on an Nvidia Tegra, you can use your own integrated graphics. I already have done my second, uh, this is my second review because I've done it on my, 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 my computer right here. But now it's time to test it out on a touch screen and I actually enjoy it a lot. It feels like a true humongous high definition big tablet as you can see I do have a real Android tablet right here but now I'm gonna run the BlueStack software which is this icon I don't know why they call it BlueStacks when I see red, green, blue, yellow so double click right here and now you do have the inner see now it's loading the, and since this screen pops up because I do have an Xbox 360 controller plugged in and the Logitech controller is basically is a wired 360 controller because most games now are pr proprietary to the Windows Live Gaming, so any games for games for Windows, it will run it through the controller. But drawback is, you are not able to use your old school gaming pads. Like for example, I have this game pad, and I can't play Mortal Kombat, or I even have a PS2 uh, controller converter to play uh, by USB, and it won't work for it. Or even my old school Gravis gamepad. <laughs> so now I'm actually using an Acer Aspire uh, Z3101. This is uh, the this is the tower uh, all-in-one PC touchscreen. So now the only thing that's a little missing on the blue stack is that the interface in the bottom. Forgive my smoking. The interface in the bottom is not like the Android Jelly Bean or the Android 2.0 like it is over here in the top corner of this tablet. It has what it's running, and I do have. This is a generic, um, this is a very, very generic, mm -hmm. generic tablet. It's a generic uh, high definition tablet <clears throat> with HDMI, but um, it runs on a gingerbread Android. But anyways, back to here, I do have um, a controller set up, and now it says that it's giving me this. This is uh, the controllers for Angry Bird, because some games do have this icon and some games are, don't even have it and you're able to play on it so right now I'm actually going to try Fast and the Furious and see if it'll work and uh, what do you call it wait let me try another game okay now I really like Angry Bird this is an example um, Angry Bird was one of the very first touch games and it is the best way to you can use the mouse, as you can see I'm using a mouse, just click OK. I have all the episodes, this is a cool game. You just run the APK files and it all, I'll show you how it runs. This is actually more of a revised review. Well since it's like a tablet based interface, it doesn't scroll like it does in the cell phone. Uh, I do have a little bit of ads. So now let me pick back. As you can see, uh, let me move the mouse cursor out of the way. Uh, just touch your way in and then play like a. Heck yeah. Pinchi Puerco. Pinchi Morano. Verde Marano. Oh, in Tagalog, Chao. Nina Namen Babu. Sila eh. Ha. Guay lo wango. Um, sayo. Yeah. I don't know how many languages. Remember, I speak a lot of languages, so, yeah. So, as I continue, and I am just using my touch screen uh, all in one PC. Ooh, man, perdón, no tengo buena pontería. Oh, please, please. Okay, now that's two strikes I gotta do. Aim it right. And then, next one. Oh, I really miss. Uh, I'm being sluggish right now because I'm making this review. Uh, it does play, uh, for example, um, Cut Rope. Cut Rope is another touch game where you're slicing your way. 
This this application is more perfect since I'm running on Windows 7. <clears throat> because this uh, tower, uh this only one PC does not support um, Windows 8 on the touch feature. It does work Windows 8, but the touch feature does not work because IdeaCom does not support Windows 8 yet. Um, see, it, it's really cool. See, you can actually see the swiping. Yep. Mm -hmm. Candy Crush. This is a unique way of playing Candy Crush. Instead of using the mouse, click here, click there, get it, yeah, get the three strikes and it gets out. Now, with this, mm -hmm. you can actually log in on Facebook. Now, in touch screen based on Candy Crush, you just have to... Wait. I don't get it. Why there's a little yellow spot there? Oh, there we go. I got rid of it. Actually, it looks like that's from the configuration. Mm. Now, let's try Grand Theft Auto 10 Anniversary. This is Grand Theft Auto 3. No, I don't want to. I don't know. I still have to install the game. Darn it. All right. Now, my second review, real quick, is a legitimate PSP. This is not a fake one. Let me put this boy right here. Uh, a real legitimate PSP. I want to show you guys it's not fake. This is a real PSP. It's really real. Yeah, this is a white one. PSP. This is a PSP Go. Uh, I already have loaded my games in it. I mean, countless of games. And the PSP Go has the most lousiest browser. I mean, I wish this was a touch screen, but JXD has perfected that. As you can see, as a pure, a real analog, not the fake stuff. So, scrolling the end Lego. Oh, yeah. The sad part is it doesn't have an integrated camera, but you do you can do add pictures in here. You can play the games like this. I do have this add-on I got for a dollar in Dollar Tree. Um, the dollar Tree and all these value stores like Family Dollar, 99 cents only. You're able to you know get devices and get good good prices. It has a home button here, so easily quit, and then you can just quit. And also this is a jailbroken device that you're able to play Japanese games as well because. Um, there are some games and PSPs, uh, titles that was not released. So thank you Sony for making this device because they got rid of the UMD feature because they figured their device can run digital anyway. But the drawback about this PSP N1001 is that it doesn't have a UMD reader. It has nothing but a G G style uh, Wi-Fi uh, wi adapter, and it takes a long time to download the games, and it only has probably 13 gigabytes of uh, internal memory and it uses an M2 uh, slot on the side just like a real Vita on the side and then um, I had this plus the bottom part that I got from the dollar store the, the controller deck because of its unique design it is a unique design <clears throat> the thing is that's too small so it's more of a pocketeer type of thing um, they actually perfected it by making the Sony Xperia which is a, a, a cell phone uh, I do recommend the Sony Xperia compared to this, uh, but the only thing is you're not able to play PSP games. You're a lot of people jailbroken those and playing and start a updating its drivers and its firmware and plus its OS to become an Android 4.0. Um, the browser on this is really whack. Um, it doesn't really support Flash. And let me try picking a game. I mean, games. The the hardware seems to be like more of a a Dreamcast uh, graphics to me on the portability but yet it does support for you to play games and it does um, the games from PS3 to you know Bluetooth your way and this and stuff but too bad it doesn't have a touch screen I love the fact that when you close it it does have a screensaver looking cool but too bad you can't really change the screensaver because it's too proprietary